what is the guys Graham here and on today's video I just couldn't risk <laughs> so yeah what is up everybody um I apologize for the delay of the video coming out um I've just been pretty busy uh, prepping to go back to the UK I'm doing my passport so I've been doing that and I've been playing a little bit of Minecraft on our uh multiplayer survival server so if you, hey, if you guys are curious to see that, I mean, you can hop by on our Twitch and on our Facebook. I'm streaming that currently. And uh, well, if you want to see an overview of the video as well, or like an overview of the Minecraft base and whatnot, you can just tell me and I can make a video for that as well. It's, a, it's actually pretty fun. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm having fun with Minecraft again. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so... My disclaimer for the build is that I'm not gonna be, you know, telling everyone that this is Oh, this is a hidden gem Oh, I hope they don't nerf this Oh, I got one shot, but yeah <laughs> So, you know, I'm not gonna say this is the best build, but it can be done And it'll handle pretty much every boss As I will show with the bossing compilation um, But it will not handle the uber bosses though I have tried it, couldn't do it doesn't matter anyway, you can farm pretty reliably with this. So this is great. So, my initial thoughts on why I made the build is that because um, when I found out that there are going to be no changes to skill gems and whatnot, I thought that, uh, okay, so same meta last league, and I was bored with Stormburst, which is what we used. And I thought, you know, hmm, if we try to make something else. Then I suddenly thought about the Gladiator. Hmm. Alright, well, it's been killed anyway, but... Let's see if we can still make a bleed build work. But I did. So, I just decided to go for Crimson Dance build because it's off meta. Um, not a lot of people will be caring about bleed builds this league. And I know how to craft a little bit. So I thought, you know what, maybe we can try and min-max our build like before. So that was what I did. And of course, you know, block is going to be pretty reliable. It's most especially if you're not sure on what... Uh, the damage of the enemies are going to be so that's what i did and you know like i said it's been able to clear a lot of uh a lot of content and as you can see here i managed to get the 38 challenges i'm perfectly fine with that i don't plan to go any further although you could if you wanted to i just thought that mm, you know what it's gonna be okay and uh yeah some of the other challenges that i couldn't face uh, especially the uber ones I just bought them because you can do that <laughs> you could just pay other people to carry you and for you to be able to pay people to carry you on this build is pretty much a testament to how reliably you can farm with this you know and you know, I guess I got pretty lucky with the other drops before yeah hmm What's next on our notes? Build overview. Um, so the build overview is that we are using uh, the gladiator with gratuitous violence because, of course, that is how you get yourself a good amount of damage. And then outmatch and outlast. I decided to go for this because I generate frenzy charges with blood rage anyway. Uh, pain forged. Easy way to get more at attack block. So. I just got that and we get stun immunity by hits that we block and your counter attacks deal double damage which is great since we use our counter attacks to actually heal us Out arena challenger eh. mm, yeah i didn't go for it anyway a lot of people are glorifying i've seen big ducks glorify this uh, ascendancy a lot but for me most particularly in this build i'd imagine that this is going to be better since we generate both frenzy and endurance charges so arena challenger can be left out and going back yeah so you know you just basically try and cap your block to 75 because you will use versatile combatant and that will bring your 75 attack block to 50 50 um attack block and spell block and of course since we have a uh, spell block but it's pretty low i just decided to go for uh spell suppression as well which is what we did as you can see here uh, our spell suppression is capped at 100, so any hits that or any spells that go through our block will be halved 
so that at least we can have a fighting chance because the skelly mages are absolutely devastating Eesh. i've been dying a lot this league despite the defenses that we have so if you're thinking about bringing this to hardcore i guess you can but you know just reduce your damage but yeah that's been basically it um last layer of defense we have fortitude forbidden flame and flesh combination from the gladiator and our offensive mechanic of course crimson dance along with a few very beautiful masteries from the axe as you can see here we have faster bleeding infliction and a 10 percent more damage with hits and ailments that are on low life very very hurtful and uh to show you why as you can see here we import the build we have 5 million damage right now in the map and if it is for example Cirrus if for example you've been you've been lingering around him for over 4 seconds which is the amount of time for pride to kick into full gear and if for example you hit all your frenzy charges since with anomalous blood rage you can do that and if he turns into low life then you're dealing six million damage uh, per second if all of your crimson dance stacks are flying and what's different as what's different from uh attacks as well is that you know with hit damage yeah sure you can easily reach you know in the tens of millions the twenties of millions but this is six million damage per second without you even doing anything as long as you make your crimson dance stack properly you are dealing six million damage per second and that will be over four seconds so that is basically 24 million damage over four seconds guaranteed damage so despite numbers being pretty low if you compare to how hits work and how damage over time works then you think this is low nah it's not so yeah that is basically what it is our skill gem setups is just gonna be anomalous lacerate because of the increased damage brutality of course and melee fizz so you can increase your bleeding damage even more swift affliction of course because we're using crimson dance awaken deadly ailments which will allow you to have a little bit of uh, a little bit more of a gap a little bit of leeway so to speak to put in more crimson dance stacks or to refresh the ones that are there and then multi-strike to just make sure that you have a great amount of attack speed and then for your auras you have pride uh, mixed with enlightened determination and defiance banner and of course you're if you're going to be in hardcore you can drop pride for grace and that is going to give you a whole nother dimension of your ability i have tried it out it's really good <laughs> it's really good but i'm a little bit more used to having the damage and you know eh, soft core anyway and then you know just a portal so that we can not pick up portal scrolls anymore flesh and stone and maim support no brainer for our movement it's in our gonna be in our boots and then for that we have faster attacks and shield charge so that we can cover a lot of ground but if we're gonna uh fight against bosses like you know Cirrus, the eater of worlds and the searing exarch flame dash just level just at level one it's gonna be perfect and there is where we have our anomalous blood rage as well and of course you have a chance to gain a frenzy charge when you hit a unique enemy so that's going to be very helpful in giving you a whole nother level of dps and then lastly we have the ancestral protector with molten shell that's where we place it and culling strike so that we can basically just bring the enemy down to 90 percent of their health and then let the ancestral protector cull the boss and then lastly here or our gloves we have reckoning repost and vengeance so these are all counter attacks and we have two aoe counter attacks and one strike counter attack and all of them are being supported by like hit so that we can gain 
a lot of life back when we hit enemies with those attacks and of course we have a crimson round shield which gives us a five percent chance to or to recover five percent of life when we block so whether that's going to be attacks or spells if we block it we get a little bit of life that is a great way to maintain your durability and then when it comes to gear you can build this any way you want i just decided to build this how this was so i just got i just elevated the elder fizz mod uh awakened it with redemption to get more mana reservation efficiency the amulet as long as you can get yourself a tier one fizz dot and some resistances that's going to be fine although you can get one live with even more fizz dot or you can get one with the dissolution which is the uh normal damage over time multi so you can do that a steel ring with stats because you know you're gonna you're gonna have to get yourself a couple of attributes on this and then a vulnerability ring with resistances although i have seen some other people that have been using lacerate as well that are using um circle of uh guilt i think that was uh to increase the buff effect of herald of purity that's what they're going with and then instead of having vulnerability here they're just using hands of the high templar with vulnerability so like i said it is just so flexible you can do that uh, my gloves beautiful i like how i made these gloves tier one fizz and you know the eldritch implicits because i feel that this is going to be the best combination of implicits that we can get on a pair of gloves and um the boots uh the boots are actually uh, pretty bullshit i won't i won't lie <laughs> i just took the chaos res and the spell suppression and that was it you know but it still works perfectly fine um i haven't changed this since i picked it up i managed to get this and then uh just you know slap on some eldritch implicits and that was it so you know um, I did the same as well on our armor. Our armor, uh, you can try and get the Searing Exarch to become higher, but usually right now, if you're using a rare armor and that is not uh, influenced, um, it will be great to have yourself uh, an armor with the exquisite Searing Exarch implicit where you get the increased effect of non curse auras. O auras that are being increased in effect are always going to be powerful and they're going to be really helpful to your build so try that out and then lastly of course Roslatha's Roslatha without using a without using Roslatha on a bleed build are you even trying not unless you're a champion <laughs> because champions are pretty powerful as well flasks basically just use any filler that you'll need I just went with this combination. You can replace a granite flask with a jade flask. Won't matter at all. Amethyst because we lack chaos res. Quicksilver, just for convenience. And then our beautiful axe, which we made with recombinators. We were very lucky that this happened. Um, but yeah, that's what it looks like. And what I did though is that um, I just used Jack the Axe actually to just level this up. Uh. I think I bought it within day two of the league. I was using it. Oh no, I bought it within day one of the league, yeah. I used Jack the Axe at level 65. You can use it at that level. And using Jack the Axe that early during the league start is amazing. It will give you a huge, huge amount of defense. You just need to get your life and resistances a little bit higher because Jack the Axe has an aura where it reserves your life. But that reservation will give you 10% more damage over time multiplier for bleeding and will also give you flat 400 regen per bleeding enemy around you. I think that's... And I think that also works up to 4. So if you can increase your life as much as you can with Jack the Axe, you're going to be golden. So yeah, that's basically it. I just decided to get myself, you know, a better axe once I really felt that I was not dealing as much damage as I could. So, yeah, that's uh, basically it when it comes to that part. Um, farming strat, you can basically just go with anything you want. I can't do this just yet. But 
the best thing, of course, when you're farming is to make a multitude of your strategies. You know, I was proper crafting. Um, I was going on expeditions. And not only was I... I was actually not selling my logbooks. I was running my logbooks as well. Um, I didn't get lucky with Gwenin though, so, you know, it doesn't matter anyway. Uh, Tujin, Tujin was very, very powerful. Tujin is a great, stable source of income. Um, when running his logbooks, and of course, when haggling with him, that is amazing. I've gotten a lot of exalts from him. And, uh, Rog. Who is Rog? No, I'm just kidding. He's, he's great for the first week of the league. That's, <laughs> that's basically all he's good for. And then, of course, you have Danig. And uh, he's great to increase your refresh currencies. I didn't decide to sell uh, his logbooks. I decided to run them so that I could run more and refresh more and haggle more. So, you know, that's basically it. But, yeah. That's how the build is. I managed to get ourselves uh, a maid blood from farming with this build. And, uh... So that goes to show that you can you can actually make a good amount of money with this if you tried and there were there were times where i didn't even try so yeah um i hope the video isn't too long I have a look 16 minutes perfect okay so um what i'm gonna do here is just give you a bossing compilation and you know you don't need to worry it's not gonna take too long some of them are just a couple of minutes although i if I'm not mistaken, I think the Elder Slayers may be a little bit different in quality because I streamed it on Facebook and Facebook streaming is still shit. So I just recorded it and placed it here. So hope you guys enjoy and I shall be seeing you all, I guess, once we get new new news from Path of Exile. And uh, yeah, uh, like, share and subscribe, you know, call to action. I have to do it. And, uh, you know, just tell me if you'd like to see the Minecraft video overview of our base. No problem with that. You can catch me on Twitch by the time this upload. I will be streaming Minecraft then on Twitch. So, you know, if you guys want to check that out, you can go there. And so, yeah, that has been it, guys. I shall be seeing you all once the patch notes are released. Okay. Okay. Let's go with this boy. Oh my god, I know we're gonna die. We have to kill Baron first. Where is Baron? I can't do this just yet. Baron? Baron. That's Drox. That is Baron. Okay. It's absolute chaos. Where is Bar I can't see Baron. Is he dead? I hope he's dead. Yo, did we just do a deathless Elder Slayers? Sheesh. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, let's go. Can we do a deathless? Hope we can. 
Uf. Yep. 84 quantity. Okay. Okay, so before we end the stream, we're gonna try and see if we can kill the Exarch. Which we can. Hmm. I just hope we can get ourselves an omniscience this time. Tank. Uh oh. What? What? Man, 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 Absolute chaos. Oh, oh. I survived. <laughs> what the hell? I survived. Oh, and still no omniscience. Dead. That's already with 84% quantity. She I have a fairly decent amount. Nice. Let's increase the dialogue volume. Death made real. Stop resisting. I can't do this just yet. <laughs> Lucky, I guess, that I dodged some of the other ones. Because I know that I dodged some of them. Still. A cascade of pain. 
Uno. Damn. So it was mine. Can't do this just yet. At least if we <clears throat> don't get if we don't get to get ourselves to finish the challenge at least we can show that we can do it deathless There we go, Deathless Maven. 